Second Chronicles. Excuse me. In the Old Testament. I'm going to look at the seventh chapter. Got a few verses in the Bible. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 15 says, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attentive unto the prayer that is made where? In this place. Amen. I'm going to use for a subject today. A race for the cure. Amen. A race for the cure. A race for the cure. We're racing today, aren't we? It didn't just start with COVID-19, did it? We were racing while others didn't even know what COVID-19 was. I was one of them. So, throughout our lives, and all through history, we, I say we because the human race, have sought after and raced after cures and remedies for our ailments and our diseases and our problems that have plagued the human race. Later on in civilization, We've even been uh, bent on finding all that we could do to remedy our discomforts. Because we love our comforts, don't we? We've even made great notes of worldwide of those who have made some remedies. We start with a Dr. Joseph Lister, he is a pioneer in Listerine antiseptic. Y'all remember that? Yes. One man by the name of Louis Pasteur, who founded the pasteurization process for milk to make it more susceptible, uh, well, not, not that it would make it more feasible for human consumption. Because milk was all right, but it carried something that uh, people call tuberculosis. And so they, he found out a way to make uh, tuberculosis move on out of milk. And I've been noticing that uh, all of these medical foundations that we know about today, all these universities, and, and all of this scientific research have all been founded for one reason. They're trying to find the cure. When I look around and see this thing, I thought about this. Some people have left their entire fortune, have left their entire inheritances to universities and to foundations just to fund the development and the research racing for the cure. Cures and the people who 
found them the cure, they know they found the cure. They have been crowned as more known, all, they, they're, they're renowned all over the world. And they are more popular to people than God. Amen. Now, I, I don't mean to come across this morning being flipped and fly, but regardless to how many diseases man says has been cured, have you noticed that there has always almost been another recurrence of that same disease that they say was cured? I mean, the very same thing. In some place, among some race of people, some way, somehow. Now, I'm not picking an argument. It's not my intention of confronting anyone about this. But the most of what humans have seen from all institutions is merely a form of medication. Why was it developed for uh, one specific reason? To help the human disease and the human ailment. Yes. And all the medicines could do was slow down that disease. Yes. I got a witness? Yes. Because that's what medication exists for. Mm -hmm. Only to help the symptoms yes. of that specific disease. Yes. And have you noticed this? These are the main treatments that make them so popular. They offer a treatment, but it's not always effective. In other words, it doesn't work the same way on everybody. It don't produce the same results. So we run to another doctor, after another doctor, after another doctor. There's a reason for this. There's only one who can take credit for the healing and not the treatment. The healing. Regardless of the institution. M.D. Anderson, Council Treatment Centers of America, Methodist, Baptist, there's only one institution. And that is the institution of God. Because there's only one whose name is Jehovah Rapha. God. You remember uh, the bowed down woman had been bowed down for 18 years? You remember blind Bartimaeus? You remember Jairus' daughter? The bowed down woman, God did not, when, he, when Jesus met her, he did not Raise her up and tell her, now go get you one of those, uh, those new arrow pops and put it on and come back and see me in a little while. Okay. When blind Bartimaeus, when he healed him, he didn't tell him, that now I want, you to, I want you to go to the optometrist and get you some new glasses and come back and tell me what you see. No, he said, he raised up seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Jairus' said, daughter, he didn't tell her when she was laying there sick, dead. He did not tell her Take three aspirin and call me in the morning and let me know how you're doing. Because he healed them. There's not one doctor, one institution anywhere that I know of. Now, I could be wrong, but I, I believe it. There's not one that has out there on the, on, on the sign, heal them. I don't care what's wrong with them. I don't know of one that's got out there on the board, heal them. They don't even claim it. Recorded in God's word. God talked to Moses and told Moses to tell them. Said it, tell the people I say, if they will hearken to my voice, in other words, if they hear me, with their heart, not the ears. He said, and do what is right. You got to do right in my sight. He said, and will listen. Firm to what I'm saying, my commandments. 
He said, tell them, I'll put none of those diseases upon them that I put upon Egypt. Y'all hear me? He said, but I am the Lord that healeth thee. I ought to be a witness that I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now listen, I'm not telling anybody in here not to believe in remedies, not to believe in doctrines. I'm just telling you believe more in Jesus. Amen. Believe more in him. God going to get us about that. We give God a whole lot less credit than what we give man about everything. Most of us remember the polio epidemic. You remember that Sunday in 1960 or uh, 61, one of them, uh, they had all of us lined up going to our churches, to our schools, going on what they call Saban Oral Sunday. Y'all remember that? Dr. Albert Saban had came out with this, had come out with this uh, remedy for polio and put it in a sugar cube and had all of us going out there taking it. Now, scientists have said, even though Dr. Uh, uh, Saban did all of this research work, there is still no cure for polio. All he did was slow it down. I'm glad now. I'm glad. A whole lot of us in here are, are glad that it's something that slow it down, slow these diseases down, give ease to our minds and bodies. I'm glad about that. That's a blessing from God. But they're still racing for cures. While diseases are, that we know of are not curable, we're going to be glad that God has sent some ease to it. Most medications, at best, come up with mixed results. They're getting a higher claim for the job they have done. They were all outstanding. Nitroglycerin. That was all good. Now he working. Let him work. He, look, he, doctors made these things. They made crutches. They did surgery. But one thing about it, metformin, insulin, they work, don't they? In most cases. Some folk are insulin resistant. It works. But at best, they all require lifelong treatment. I want you to think about it. Lifelong treatment. Because there's only one healer. We're running after everything else except the real healer. Now, God said, I know one thing. He said, whatever I say is forever. So don't add nothing to it. Don't take anything from it. He said, why as, as some men have, lo have lost their fear of God. That's what's wrong. But he says, and I'm saying this, what we have done, some have lost their fears, but I say this, others have not even found it. Some don't even know how to fear God. God has placed a lifelong requirement upon us. To us only. He says, if my people, not the world, he says, if my people, can't get out of that, can we? Folks, us who have been saved and sanctified shall humble themselves. Come down off your high horse, is what he said. If you won't come down, I I'll touch your economy. I'll touch your banks. I'll touch your jobs. I'll touch the funeral homes. I'll touch the churches. If you won't come down, I'll crash the stock market. 
All your factories, I, I will touch them. You won't come down, I'll knock you down. His word has already instructed us to always pray, hadn't it? But he says, seek my face. Seek out this face. I want to hear from God. I want to feel his touch. I want to feel his power moving. Then he says, quit your old ways. Seek a more excellent way. He said, when you did all that, he said, then, then will I hear from heaven. You ain't at God then. Right. Amen. You, you pull a joystick then. Yeah. In at God. Then, then, what, then will I hear from heaven. And after you get through hearing us, he said, I will heal your land. All right. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you do all those things. That's when my ears going to open up to you. Otherwise, until then, I ain't studying you. You can cry. You can run the church. You can do anything. You can claim preaching. But I ain't thinking about you until you do all these things I said to you. Then I thought about something. I thought about Jesus. One day he went to Jerusalem. When he got down to Jerusalem, he was getting ready to go to the temple. Well, Jesus went in. There was a sheep pool. Some who studied it said that there was where well, it was called a sheep gate. Everything that went on in the city had a certain gate to go through. So they dipped the sheep in the pool. Said it was on a Sabbath day. Now he said that it was called a theft. Because that meant the house of mercy. Can you see Jesus? The mercy of God. Going through the mercy gate. Listen. He's watching the needs of people. He said, look, I'm going through this way because I know somebody needs me there. That's why they wrote the song. Oh, Lord, stop by here. Somebody need you. Somebody is praying. So I want you to. <clears throat> After God, so his son Jesus went by the gate. He looked around. There was a porch. Five porches. They called Solomon porches. The Bible said there were all manner of men. Women and children when the multitude was there. Some were crippled. Some were blind, and some of them had problems of mind. He said, impotent folk. That means you got a shot coming everywhere. And he said he walked by, and he saw all those people. But Jesus began to look at them. He noticed one man was there. One man was laying there around the pool. Jesus would tell he had been there a mighty long time. And Jesus walked up to him and asked him, said, listen, will thou be healed? A direct thing. A direct question. Will thou be healed? The man told Jesus, said, listen. He didn't answer Jesus, say yes or no. He said, but I've been here a long time. But every time I go into this water, get ready to go into the water, somebody stepped down before me. You see, there was a, a, a story behind it. The pool of Bethesda. The Bible says, in a certain season, an angel came by and stirred up the water. The Bible said, trouble the water. I wish God would stop by here and trouble America. But we need a sermon right now. So they had people around the pool who believed in the power. 
They believed that the angel did come. I don't know when he came every season, but he came one season. And they believed in the power of the living power of God. And Jesus said, will thou be healed? And he told them, listen, I can't go down them. I, I, I'm crippled. I can imagine Jesus in my mind saying, but that ain't what I asked you. I said, will thou be healed? So Jesus told us to lift, look, look. He know he was waiting on somebody to move in. Jesus told us to listen. I tell you what you do. You just pick your bed up and walk with it. The moral of the story was, Jesus told him to get up and, and walk because there was no power in the, in the pool. We today are, are worried about uh, problems and, and things, but we're worried about the wrong thing. Jesus was letting them know it's not in the pool, but it's in the power of God. It's in my word. I said, get up and walk, and you don't have to have no water. Water. All you need is the word of God. Get up and walk. The world needs to hear today. It's not in COVID-19 healing. It's not in the, the, the CDC. It's not in the governors and the doctors that are making all the decisions. It is in the word of God. I am the God that healing me. Too many folks believe in everything else except the, the word of God. His name is Jehovah Rapha. I'm the God that stopped by your house. I'm the God that looks over your family. I'm the God that heals me. How many love me? How many love God? I'm the God that heals me. You don't need a baptizing pool. But you got to have the word of God, the Holy Spirit in your heart. You got that. You got everything you need. So why are we racing? Racing for the cure. Let us plead, man and woman, boy and girl. Let us stop by the my people that are called by my name. Let us stop by that. And we'll stop by that. And do what God's word says to do. You're talking about a healing. How many men are going to be healed? Somebody left a couple of t-shirts on my desk that said, God is bigger than COVID. You better know it. I said, you better know it. God, listen, we're going to have to start acting on it. I have to stop and tell God thank you. Because he has given us life. We have to live it. We are going to have to live it. We can't keep on doing the same thing we've been doing. Going the same way we've been going. Saying the same thing we've been saying. We got to have a new life. Glory be to God.
up that morning, our faith will be increased by our hearing from the word. Bless us, Lord God, as we come and go. Take us home and stay there with us a while. Wise God, our Savior. 